Okay. Hi, good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining our panel discussion, the South African Landscape Photography for Collectors. I am Marilise van Seil, Senior Art Specialist for Aspire Art Auctions. And it is my pleasure to host and chair this discussion tonight, which is presented alongside our African Photography Auction in partnership with the Photography Legacy Project. Now, this auction is the second project that we're doing in partnership with the PLP, initiated to support their activities. This auction, and if you had a look at it, is indeed the largest of its kind. And um, it is a shared undertaking to introduce and raise the profile of African photography locally and abroad. Now, I would like to welcome and thank our panelists for this evening. I know it's... Um, it's very late already, and we also have a few challenges. Lahotu is cold in Johannesburg, so he also said if he's freezing, we just need to know that he's under uh, load shedding. And um, zooming in from Paris is curator, art critic, academic, and international cultural policies consultant Ngone Fall. Ngone has curated various exhibitions on African cultural production and art in Africa, Europe, and the United States while also editing books on contemporary visual art and photography. Her legacy project is the heavyweight publication and anthology of African art, the 20th century, and she's currently the general commissioner of the Africa 2020 season in France. Hi Ngone, welcome and thank you so much for making time. I know you are a very, very busy person. And then TV and film producer and avid art collector Mfundi Wundla is joining in from Johannesburg. Um, Mfundi is deeply invested in South African and African contemporary art. He has also been working to encourage photography in South Africa and co-founded the Photography Education Trust with the late South African photographer David Goldblatt. Hi Mfundi, thank you so Hi. much also for making time to join us. And then from his home in Johannesburg is Lechetu Makola, formerly the head of the Market Photo Workshop. Lechetu is now the new CEO of the Javit Art Center at the University of Pretoria. Highly You have disappeared, Marie. Now, unfortunately, Gordon Massey could not join this evening. On very short notice, we were sad to hear that he needs to attend to a personal matter. We wish him well. So I hope everyone will enjoy tonight's discussion. We aim to be done by 8 p.m. and uh, we will have some time for a couple of questions at the end. So please feel free to touch with us then if there's anything you would like to ask. Now, as you've heard, each of our panelists are highly respected individuals in their fields, but they all share a passion for photography and in particular African photography. So let's kick off the discussion about collecting photography and ask our panelists to briefly share with us what sparked their interest in photography. And Ngone, I'm opening the floor for you. Thank you very much. Good, uh, good evening or good afternoon, depending where you're logging in from. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be with you on these uh, hectic times that I'm facing. Well, I think my interest in photography that goes with something very simple. Who are we as people? How our identities are shaped? and what photography tells about our past and how African photographers uh, are able to, whether it's senior photographers, young photographers today, just to have this kind of transcending our cultures and our identity, knowing that we're talking about a continent that has been heavily occupied for many centuries and that we had always others, outsiders, taking pictures about our landscape, about our buildings, about our people, and therefore putting that into ethnographic museums or ethnographic studies and defining who we are as if we were insects. 
uh, and my interest, that's how it started. Wondering back in the days when photography as a medium uh, arrived on the continent, who were the first pioneer photographers and how they were looking at their people and at their own society. Right, and uh, Lahutu, over to you. Um, yeah, my, my interest also is not too far from, from Gone, but uh, in terms of the South African context, I mean, my background is fine art, obviously, I'm exposed to um, image making, um, but also interpretation of images uh, from painting, sculpture, also to photography and film. Uh, I think I, I really went deep into photography when I worked on Robben Island, uh, working closely with the Maibuya archives, uh, which is an archives of the apartheid um, landscape of, of this country. And for me, the most important thing is how do we use archives to educate, but also to reflect and reconnect. And especially in, the, in a country as such as ours, which is going through its own transition, you know, the, 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 the events of this past few weeks are not too far from the images that you see of, of the 80s. How can photography become a tool to translate our understanding of society, but of, of ourselves also? Uh, how to link up with memory uh, through images. I think for me, that's where I am at. The, the, the soul of images in informing um, where we come from, who we are right now, but how do you begin to project who you want to be in the future? So it's more kind of conceptual, but also very spiritual in, 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 in a sense. Thank you. And um, Fundi, tell us about your interest in photography. Oh, sorry, Mfundu, can you, can you just unmute yourself? When I grew up, I grew up in a township, uh, a satellite township in, uh, in Johannesburg. And as a kid, I was always, you know, uh, surrounded by, by photographs, either in magazines, newspapers, uh, 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 covers in magazines like Drum and all of that. And all of these photogra the photographers, most of them were Africans, you know, uh, uh, with African people in the photograph. So I guess that's, that was my introduction to, to photography. And when I was growing up, they were called snaps, you know, and, uh, uh, but later on in my life, when I got into the world of uh, moving images like television and motion picture, I, I trans and the love for that moving image, I transitioned to still photography and uh, largely influenced by the friends I made in, uh, in, the, in the photography world, people like David uh, Goldblatt, Cedric Nan, uh, Savelo Mlangeni, uh, um, you know, uh, a number a number of my friends, you know, who were active in Zuletim Territoire and others. Uh, so that's, uh, with that, I, 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 they, they taught me about the, how to decode pictures and that sort of thing. And uh, also through self-study, uh, reading uh, theory books on photography and that sort of thing. And I just, one of my greatest joys and is just going through photography books and looking at photographs. And I used to do that every Wednesday for the last years of David Goldblatt's life. And every Wednesday we'd eat samosas and drink wine and going over photographs. So that's basically, you know, sort of a background about me and photography. So if we look at all the publications that have been published about African photography and the Biennale is dedicated um, to African photography and the many exhibitions. Why in your view Ngone and Lehotu has photography in Africa become such a significant and popular art form? Ngone? Well, precisely, I guess, because of what I said about uh, being in charge of our own narrative. Okay. Uh, and not allowing people to define us uh, and being passive about it. So I, I believe that's how photography and photographers uh, became more and more visible 
I witnessed that rise of interest. It started around the early 90s. Uh, and when I was at Revue Noir, the contemporary African art magazine, we paid very clear attention to photography, doing research, collecting, and looking uh, when we were traveling, when I was traveling, going, talking to people, looking at family albums. That was also an important way to see how it happened during yeah. your days. And yeah. always asking my grandmother, how was Dakar during your days? How was Saint Louis during your days? How did you use to dress? And just going through the family uh, albums, uh, then I was realizing, comparing that to what was uh, projected or proposed by, uh, let's say, Western Museum, I saw a kind of total uh, gap. Um, and I guess the 90s, you know, that's when contemporary art started to get organized on the continent from uh, the few institutions we had. Uh, and also with then uh, the Dakar Biennial, uh, paying more attention to photography, then Bamako starting yes. a dedicated biennial for photography, and then also encouraging, and then you have the Market Photo Workshop as a significant initiative that has been giving access to training to so many young uh, people, not just South Africans, because I know also some young Africans, let's say from Southern Africa, who went uh, via that program. Uh, and I think it's uh, highly important to have that uh, African view on who we are and our societies. And I don't see the movement stopping. And I don't see photography as a separate medium. As a creator, when we talk about visual arts, I'm always interested in different forms of creativity, whether it's text, whether it's image, whether it's moving image. It could also be a uh, comic novel whatsoever. It's, for me, it's about how are Africans looking at their own society and how they are transcending the challenges of societies. And also because we also have photographers who are not doing documentary, but mm. who are doing art photography. Uh, you have some in the, in the, in the auction as well. Uh, yes. And so I don't like myself the distinction between documentary photography and art photography. For me, it's about what's your sensitivity as a human being and what are the messages that you want to share with a broad audience and therefore also with collectors? Okay, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I would just like to circle back to the um, market photo workshop. And I think, Lahoto, you would be very proud to know that we have 10 alumni from, from that school in our auction. And it's really wonderful to see what these photographers are doing. So yes, over to you. I saw them and I was really excited to oh, see, that's, see that's the combination fantastic. of educators and, and, and former students, you know, yes, being the same yes. platform. And I think just pick up from Ngon, platforms are critical because platform does where power and authority of, of deciding what is, an, what, what is a best image. And obviously you know very well that image is about construction of meaning and construction of meaning comes from cultural experiences. And you find a lot of time that uh, certain particular type of images are presented as the best images in the world uh, throughout time uh, through the platforms such as the World Press Photo because of proximity to these these platforms and and I don't believe that um, uh, you know uh, the, the photograph in Africa just emerged. I mean, West Africa had the biggest role to play uh, in the 50s, 60s in terms of turning the lens. Uh, to, to, to the people, people take actually access in the medium to really uh, represent who they are and communicate who they are, you know, and we know very well that in, in South Africa, there are a lot of photographers uh, through uh, platforms such as drum that begin to to make images. And I think those images, obviously because of lack of access to these platforms, uh, for many reasons, they, the images never get profiled in that way. So I think uh, yes, the past 30 years have been quite critical. Uh, you know, I think maybe it's because of the fall of the Berlin Wall, the Tiananmen Square in 1989 in South Africa, the biggest match that happened that things began to change globally, right? Uh, where access and people beginning, especially from the diaspora, but also from the continent, beginning to enter those, those platforms and the voice of representing the continent and the diaspora becomes much more more, more kind of uh, visible. And that's why we have uh, the Bamako being initiated in, in the 90s. But through that time, I think people started getting each other where now I think we are much more uh, uh, democratic in accessing these, these, these platforms, even though it's still still difficult. I mean, I was uh, the first chairperson of, 
of, of uh, the, 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 the World Press photo in, in, in 2020, and the first African for that matter. And that is quite significant in that I, we are beginning to get involved in, in deciding what is an image and how to view image from different perspective and what to how to uh, align value in an image. And I think the reality is that we've always had a great eye. We've always had great image makers through our time. Now more people are accessing the platform because they're seeing that the platforms are accessible and these images are becoming much more uh, uh, um, available for engagement in a much more democratic way. And like I would say like in the past five years or so, the digital platforms, the virtual platforms again, democratize power of one representing themselves. And I think that has been the game changer. So um, I was wondering, you know, when we look at African photography by definition, and more specifically at the collection of photographs in this year's auction, which spans over 70 years of image making on the continent, and both Ngone and you, Lahoto, you've answered some of that because um, I was wondering, you know, what do these images tell us about the people, the places, and about everyday life in Africa? What do these images reveal about the photographers themselves? And how are these images in subject, may I say, different or unique from photography practices in elsewhere? And I, I think for me, most importantly, is that we turn the lens to ourselves. And it's like you said, Ngoni, that we take agency of the image or that Africans take agency of the image of Africa. And um, I, before our uh, panel discussion, I engaged a little bit with Mfundi as well, and he selected a few images to answer this question in particular. And um, my colleagues are just gonna bring up the slideshow and he's just briefly gonna take us through these images to answer some of these questions. And then we can also see, you know, if there are, you know, specific discourses that are particular to photography from Africa in general. So um, Karina, can you start the slideshow for us? And then Ufundi, you can just take us through them. Yeah, this um, and th this photograph to me was like I mean, it, of the, the cool power plants there spewing the gunk into the air, and uh, and uh, there's a horse there uh, grazing in the grass there, and uh, and my question is, how long will that horse stay healthy? eating that grass which is polluted with coal dust. How long will the people in that area stay healthy, breathing all that coal dust and uh, the respiratory pro uh, problems in that area and that sort of thing. That's what I extracted from, from, the, from that photograph. And uh, you know uh, that uh, the Congo astronauts and I thought this one was really something because, you know, it seemed to say to me that outer space is not only for Jeff Bezos or Richard Branson, you know, <laughs> that, <laughs> that we, we, we have imagination about outer space as well. So that's, that, 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 that was, you know, the sort of like, the, sort of the irony of the, of the comedy I drew from this photograph aside from its it's 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 lyric beauty and stuff. Same applies there. And uh, here is this uh, uh, Congo astronaut in a huge uh, uh, cargo cargo plane, like kind of saying, "I'm here and I'm ready to jump into that photo capsule, that capsule, and shoot up to space." And uh, this, this one kind of reminded me of, uh, I, I have a book in my collection of uh, this, this, this guy, Brasai, and he has a, a book uh, titled uh, Graffiti. And I just liked the, this, this must uh, individual standing behind a wall of graffiti, just, you know, just like the photograph. You just like the tactile, yeah. 
And uh, when, when I saw these two studio photographs, it, it, you know, it kind of reminded me of uh, this, the tradition of uh, uh, drawn from Malik Siddiq and stuff like that. And uh, I always like artists who, who sort of go and draw on tradition because if you draw on tradition, to me, that means the evolution of style. And uh, and the and the and the and the and the models there are, have are beautiful. They got dignity, and uh, are obviously are, are very proud uh, of their culture. And uh, and the other the, the other uh, male model there on the side is what he's dressed on is like a combination of ancient and modern. If you see what I mean. And uh, that's 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 Anna's Cole, you know. The thing is about these photographs is that my first introduction to Anna's Cole was that classic book of his House of Bondage, where photographs that expose the evil of our uh, apartheid uh, fascism, and uh, in 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 the most in the boldest of terms, and well shot documented photographs, you know that. That book alone made a great difference in educating uh, foreign audiences about what was going on in South Africa under apartheid. But these photographs show Ennis Cole in a new light. They show Ennis Cole, you know, uh, 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 photographing people who are having fun at the Shibin, uh, a, a guitarist, you know, singing at the Shibin, uh, little boys during the summer you know, uh, dousing themselves with water under a sprinkler. You know, it's all like joy of life kind of kind of photographs, uh, quite a, a flip side of House of Bondage. Uh, that, that, you know, we yeah, have people, uh, you know, having that, that tipple, the young, young boys dancing, joy of life, you know, naked, and you know, <laughs> it's, it's really a beautiful photograph. And here is this one now, the domestic with, with that white child, you know, and uh, it, there's a loving relationship there. But the question you ask is, you know, uh, here she's looking after a white child who's, who's looking after her black child at home in the yeah. township. And, and this is quite interesting. This is a, a famous independent church called the Shambe, very uh, uh, strong in the province of KZN and Natal. It's a mix of contradictions. People like stomping, like in the Zulu dance in Lamu, and then a mix of uh, uh, colonial artifacts like that peace helmet, and you see the Zulu cowhide skin, and then you see uh, skirts, you know, and then you see those knee length two-tone socks. And it's just, you know, people, like mixing up all these uh, uh, artifacts from, from European and uh, British colonial and the Zulu uh, the Zulu thing, and it's like you know expropriating all of these and making a dance of their own in worshiping uh, worshiping to God. Now. <laughs> I was saying to Marlise when we got started, you know, when I was looking at this photograph here, that that secular thing there kind of reminded me of uh, futurism because I don't know whether it was uh, my eyes playing games on me because when I pressed the upward thing, it spun this way. When I pressed the downward thing, it spun with me and it kind of, I saw some futurist elements to that photograph, which excited me because I like futurism. <laughs> and here, this is the, this is like uh, you know uh, the photographer is of 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 sort of like mixed ancestry. I mean, she is uh, her, her, her parents were born in the Orange Free State. And uh, but she was uh, born she born in Zimbabwe, and uh, very 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 uh, proud of her Shona Shona culture, 
and, uh, um, and uh, very proud of her South African connection. And, uh, and the way she, 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 she portrays the African woman, you know, like that, that dark skin African, uh, the beauty of African beauty, that black dress and uh, that minimalist uh, 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 sort of heart in the background and uh, you know, the celebration of the African savannah, and it, it just, you know, it, the photograph just hit me and uh, um, uh, in, a, in a very strong way. And the other one with the the other uh, uh, the other woman in the sort of the colored dress, you know, it's like it, it's it's the regality of it all, the dignity of it all, and. Uh, the, the 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 celebration of African textiles, and uh, yeah, that's what hit me. <laughs> when when I looked at this photograph, I started thinking about Miles Davis, the jazz the jazz artist Miles Davis. He had a sense of color, like in this uh, photograph by this uh, Congolese uh, photographer. Those, those 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 red spectacles, the 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 red shirt and the gold chain. I mean this. I mean this, and, and, and the, of course the COVID mask. And I mean this is this is this is a hip dude. This is this is this is this guy's got style, you know. And uh, 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 and and the photographer caught this image in decisively. You know, like he got it. Nailed it right on the head. Yeah, this this one, I, I you know, it's like you know, like African people, like um, uh, uh, I, I, you know, because of the oppressive nature of uh, racism, a lot of the time, you know, we found that uh, African people are not seen, you know, and and when, when after democracy, when our children started going to this white schools, you used to, I used to hear things like, oh, my children are colorblind. They don't see black or white and that kind of nonsense. And I say, if you don't see that I'm black, then you don't see me, you know? And uh, so this, 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 this that, that black face behind that mask is like, hey, I'm here, see me, I'm not unseen. And this one is quite interesting, particularly in the light of the service delivery protests and the state failure in South Africa for the ANC government not delivering the services to its people. And this photograph is a protest against power cuts across all, you know, all over South Africa who are experiencing power cuts. And, the, and that road there, there are all these rocks and stuff like that. And then there's a, there's a, there's a fallen, uh, uh, lamp post there, and uh, and and there's a there's a there's a guy that's sort of lounging and relaxing on that lamp post, and uh, in, in in my business there's a genre called dramedy, which is a mix of drama and a splash some elements of comedy in it. So I saw some serious drama, of a, of of a, of a civil unrest, and a protest for delivery of services, yet in that. In all of that, here is a protester kind of lounging on a land post. And of course, the 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 the, the, the trumpet, the trump, let the trumpet sound. This this uh, Ghanaian, uh, sorry, Nigerian rather, uh, uh, um, uh, photographer, and uh, you know, uh, sort of like the BLM movement, you know. Uh, the, 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 like all our struggles are, are sort of united in, 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 in this, in, 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 the, in, in the thirst for human rights. Here, the protesters were protesting SARS and the, and the police brutality against Nigerian people. And in a lot of ways, kind of reminded me at echoes of the, the Black Lives Matter movement, the, the murder of George Floyd, you know, and, and, and other black people in America. 
And th this one was like, you know, <laughs> you see that satellite dish on a on the roof of a of a shack, you know, in an informal settlement. And then there are those three guys who live there. Uh, it's named after those uh, Tuso, Tulo, and somebody else, and Piri. That that said to me, look, you know, I live in a shack, you know, but I'm not going to be left behind in the digital world. <laughs> and this one, like for that Soviet, is a it's a Soviet car that uh, Moscovich, and you know, kind of reminds me of all this Dakar rally and all these. Uh, rallies, you know, you no know, rubber hitting the dirt and and uh, uh, it's soul erosion through the rubber tires caused in uh, African uh, grasslands. And here is this uh, 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 a racer driving through a, a game reserve, invading the world of the of the elephant world, traumatizing the elephants in the process. He's lucky he was not, uh, they, they didn't stamp on him. And, uh, but it's all about the intrusion and, the, dislo and, and, and the, the, the dislocation of the world of nature by man. Great, wow, thanks so much Mfundi. Um, Ngone and Lecheto, I know these were not very personal sele selections from a collector, but looking at all these images, um, would you say that they are discourses particular to photography from Africa? Lecheto? Well, definitely, definitely they are, they are particular discourses that, which are quite uh, uh, similar and mainly because we are in a kind of post post-colonial kind of transition, even though some have been there for, for 40, 50 years, but there are similarities in terms of people trying to reclaim that dignity, uh, trying to re reinvent themselves in this kind of developing world. Uh, I know that somebody has asked about the digital uh, space and virtual space, uh, I mean, platforms as, as new uh, technology uh, spaces that we need to begin to respond to. And I think uh, through those kind of mediums, many people are beginning to uh, reflect on the day-to-day uh, -day experiences uh, in a very, very uh, a beautiful way. We have cell phone uh, uh, kind of technologies that allows people to explore, allow people to play around, but also importantly, it, it adds value in how we begin to be much more educated uh, in reading images, you know, uh, image I mean, photography literacy. I mean, everybody is born with some kind of literacy in reading images, but because of access to the medium, uh, we're beginning to see people understanding more of images, the power of images and how they can use the images themselves to, to, to usually profile who they are. Uh, but I think there's, there's a, a number of images. Firstly, I would just like to say, uh, Lindo Kutle is an amazing yeah. photographer. Yeah, He's super amazing. And he has this uh, kind of, um, this, this aura of his images that you find in Ennis Cole, for example, in, in imagery and thinking about images and form and, and the quietness, but yes, the, yet the depth. Um, you presented uh, Dylan Paul's work um, around environment and how capital is actually capitating land. And by the same time, I think another image that I could connect to that. So I'm going into the narrative rather than a single image and how multiple images can be put together as an auction <laughs> kind of, uh, uh, Strategy. Specific yeah, subject yeah. or theme. Yeah. Yeah. Tepisa Mabula's work that uh, she photographs beautifully. She, I think she's one of the amazing uh, portrait photographers. She photographs former miners who have won a case against, um, I, I think, this con mining, uh, what do you call it, corporate, um, uh, where their health is affected. So it's not about environments, about health, but also it's about uh, labor. Um, and lastly, uh, what's her name? Liane the portrait of a transgender woman, a very important subject matter globally, not, not only in the global South, globally, where um, transgender people are beginning to reclaim the public space mm -hmm. in a very confident way. And if you look at that image where, I mean, people, especially some of, some of us who are familiar with the township spaces, you know, that space will be a space where you will not even think of somebody dressed up like that being like that, being accepted, right? Yeah. But what 
what what she does collaborative because I like the way she she worked with 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 the models because the models are the this, these are the storytellers. So Lian becomes somebody who assists in the storytelling. So they're telling their own story in their own environment, and it's a form of protest, but a very beautiful, effective protest. Protest. So I think looking at those themes which are quite prevalent. I mean, I've seen some, some works from even as far as, as Algeria or, or Egypt where issues of sexuality are becoming documented, especially in public spaces. So there are those kind of very, very subtle kind of image, protest images that are photographed beautifully, that has a sense of attractiveness. And once you get into them, you really understand that this is about changing society's perception you know, we are in this phase of our lives and we need to begin to understand that we evolve and cultures evolve, traditions have to adjust with this evolution and young people are actually doing that. Wonderful. Uh, the, like the, the theme of these auctions um, is also Africa by Africans. And I think it, it um, strongly supports what you've just said. Um, and Gone, would you like to add anything about the discourses particular to Africa? In photography? Well, after what Lecheto said so brilliantly, I find kind of myself being speechless because he said it all. Uh, it was very strong and I, I agree with uh, everything that he said. And I'm paying more and more attention to these young photographers who are redefining the, the genre uh, and using it as a power weapon uh, to talk about the societies, how societies are being transformed and also to talk about themselves as individuals or talk about their, their communities. And I think that's something uh, very, very important, whether, and the, 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 there's artistic sensitivity uh, is also something I'm, I'm paying a lot of attention to. Or let's say to the uh, young photographer that we have in the auction, self thought who took pictures in Kibera, uh, that is supposed to be known as one of the biggest townships on the, uh, uh, on the, on the continent, uh, especially in Kenya, where when you think of it, you think of murder, crime, poverty, and the hopelessness. And suddenly you have these young human beings having dreams, having aspirations like any other human being. And so the impact of the message and, and the, the artistic quality also of his photographs and the dignity that is projected is something that I'm very much interested in. Yeah, you know, talking about Kibera, you know, I was on, uh... I went, I, I, I went on, on, on a safari with my wife, and then we, we, we flew from an airport, uh, secondary airport out, out, outside Nairobi called, um, I forget his name uh, of this airport, but you fly from this airport to Masai Mara, and for a, close to 20 or 30 minutes, the plane is flying over Kibera. It's a sprawling, uh, uh, in, uh, 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 informal settlement, almost as big as as, as Soweto, and um, the the thing is the the photograph in there. There's a photograph which I really love about this guy Odiembo showing this little girl in a, taking ballet, a, a, a ballet. She's you know a, a, a practice and stuff, and here is a girl who's in what is almost like a hopelessly looking environment with great aspirations and like she wants to be a ballerina, you know? I mean, that's a very moving photograph. Karina, would, can, can you quickly show that photograph? It's, um, it's the last one on your slide, just for you guys to see. It is beautiful, look at that. Beautiful. Also the interior. I mean, look, so at proud. Those, look at all those colors, eh? I mean, it's mm. almost like a, a, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful mess. Not yeah, mess yeah, in a way, yeah. but like, it's, it's just like amazing, this. It's an amazing photograph, you know? And that girl, I mean, that girl, she has it's dreams, a, yeah. you know? She, she's gonna go somewhere. Right. She's gonna get somewhere, she, you know, you, you can tell yeah. just by looking at her, she's gonna be somebody. Well, 
Now, if we look at all these amazing images and um, the work that comes out from especially younger photographers and our more established photographers, why, um, a question that I would like to ask the panelists, why should collectors and collecting institutions then, or those starting out to collect, consider photography and in particular African photography as part of their collection, collecting strategies? Sorry, you lost me there for a moment. Oh, we got you. Hello? Who are you asking? Hi, am I back on? Yeah, you hear, no. Marilyn? You see your voice, yeah. Did you, did you lose me there for a second? Okay, yeah. I'm here. Okay, shall I? I'll just repeat the question. Um, I was just referring to these wonderful images that we see and these photographs, and especially um, from a younger generation of photographers, but also looking at the more established photographers. And my question is, why should collectors and collecting institutions, or even those starting out to collect, consider photography, and in particular African photography, as part of their collecting strategies? No, I think uh, African photographers, you know, African photographers, in my view, are, are liberating our, our ways of seeing, you know. They are, they, are, they, are, they are capturing images that, that are all around us, but which we don't see, you know? And that, that to me excites me because, I mean, it, 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 it makes you grow as a person, you know? And, you know, so they, they, they are unleashing a, 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 a new way of seeing in, in us, you know? And then Gone, as a cultural policy maker, why would you um, champion African photography in collections? Well, um, if I have a message for African collectors or institutions, uh, it's about uh, being kind of the guardian of who we are, because mm -hmm. it's about the soul of our communities. So collecting that, uh, and sharing it with the audience. That's also having a piece of, let's say, history, the legacy, but also our future, as it is written and defined by African photographers. Yeah. It yeah. should be like a responsibility. It is, yeah. it is a responsibility, yes. Lakota, would you like to add? As, as much as I will, I will, I will not, claim that um, the, the photography, the style is homogeneous across the continent because we have 54 countries, mm -hmm. uh, the regions themselves are quite vast and varying, uh, and we have the diaspora. So influences are, are varied also in terms of the style. But what we're beginning to see is, is, is uh, you know, it's like a radical kind of interruption of what a good photograph is. As, as defined previously by the textbooks that uh, are there to define and, and create a specific way of photographing. I mean, that we borrow from the, the previous guys that have, have won multiple uh, WordPress photo, as this is a kind of a, a textbook or a template of how to make photos. So that we're beginning to see a shift in that, that they're radicalizing the, the, the idea of making an image. You know, we, we come from a history of uh, the, the terms like capture, uh, shoot, um, um, is, 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 can you hear how difficult they are shooting and capturing in mm -hmm. image making? And now people are beginning to say we are making the image. I mean, the process yeah. of making image begins to be very important where things like um, uh, idioms are translated into images and in form. People are beginning to define what a frame speaks to how they seem. You know how they speak, and these are. Uh, I mean, some will, will will say will speak to, for example, indigenous knowledge systems. These are indigenous knowledge systems translated into image making, and this is this particular period. I think for for the past maybe ten years to the next ten years, it's very important for collectors to begin to collect because this period will never happen again. This is an emergence. Africa is seventy percent nineteen year old. And yes. for that, matter, for people that want to invest, is, is a good time to invest. And we have amazing people that are experimenting and experimenting is really critical. Like experimenting, and this will inform 
possibly future photographers in terms of how they diversify the approach to making images. So it is really critical. Yes, because the photographs also capture the humanity of the moment, you know, like Robert Frank says, you know, and this is the moment at, 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 and it's gonna, it's gonna become history pretty soon. So you, you, you better get in now, yeah. now because, you know, this train is moving <laughs> out of the platform, you know. So um, Ngone, when you're in a position to advise on a photograph for collecting purposes, what are the things that you take into consideration? Well, you know, collecting is something so personal. Uh, it's always a challenge to say you're going to advise uh, a collector uh, because uh, for me, uh, it starts with love at first sight. Uh, do you fall in love with the, with the photograph or let's say with the artwork, the same way you fall in love with, let's say, a film or a novel? What attracts you? What intrigues you? How does it speak to your, to your mind, to your intellect, to your emotions? Uh, and sometimes you can't get away from a picture. You keep looking and looking at it as if you're going to be absorbed uh, by it. So I think that's, that's what people should be looking for. And not uh, the advice I will give is be careful about following a kind of fashion. If we say this photographer is, let's say, uh, the new darling of the, of the genre, uh, or if you are speculating, that let me buy it today and maybe in five years I can sell it back. It goes back to why are you collecting? Why do you want to collect uh, photography? Uh, what's the motivation for you? So mm -hmm. those are the kind of things I will just have to say, but at the end of the day, it's, it remains something very, very personal for a collector. And it's of course different if you're an institution and a museum which has a mission, let's say to document history. Um, Lahoto, in your current position, what would you look for then in a photograph, a photograph, if you, if you need to collect? Let's say. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a privilege to be in a, in a in a position of of authority in this way, but that does not mean that I will I'll um, overshadow what the, my curatorial director and 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 their team uh, present to to us. So it, it's it's a very kind of democratic process that one will apply because we really really have to engage on the value of acquiring why firstly do we acquire for what purpose you know so i think those are the dynamics that we need to look at and i don't want to put my 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 um, head on a block here because they are watching <laughs> and they're like, oh, they want to collect that but i think they are there are certain individual uh, photographers who are, are are beginning to break you know the mold in terms of how to think about images how to speak to images because for me it's beyond just that image, you know, how, what informs the photographer and how does the photographer be, uh, present? Meaning that when you, when you acquire the work, you don't only acquire that, that physical image, that print, you acquire the soul of the image making process. You acquire the soul of where this image was made. Uh, mm. People that are, are in that image when form part of what you communicate. So you're collecting a soul. Of, 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 of humanity and, and deciding on it as, as an institution such as ours, it, it has to be in line, for example, with our mission and vision uh, of what we want to begin to shift in terms of future kind of, uh, of, of uh, what, uh, generation. So it, that, that would be a very, very kind of engaging process. And I don't, I don't want to put my, my head on the line as it, <laughs> but I can, I can tap into you. <laughs> okay, that's we will we'll talk afterwards. Um, when do, <laughs> as, a, as a private collector, what do you look for in a photograph? Well, I, I, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's an intensely subjective yes. feeling. Like you you know, say, yeah, the, very the, personal. That's it. An intensely yeah. subjective feeling uh, that hits that 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 hits me in a photograph. And says to me, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna own it, you know. And um, and uh, there must be something very striking about that photograph for for, for me. And it's that, like I say, it's an, it's an intensely subjective thing. So I have I have photographs by known photographers, so-called emerging photographers, and some unknown photographers. I've got 
additioned photographs. I've got unadditioned photographs and uh, unsigned photographs, unsigned photographs. But that, it, no, I've got all of those uh, of photographs of different value, but fundamentally it's like, do I love this photograph? Yes, Does it evoke intense it. emotional feeling? And uh, what's so striking about it, which pulls me towards the photograph? Th those, that, 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 that's, that's the criteria I use, Wonderful. you know, and uh, of course, things like composition, color, and all of that, you know, uh, are also there, but but you know, you know what I'm saying. I've said enough, I think, on that. <laughs> That's good. Um, um, for those who've worked with large collections of photographs, um, Lahutu, I know you now in a, um, you know, you work for an institution, and um, um, what are the risks involved in collecting photographic works or holding photographic collections? Maybe Mfundi or. Um, you know, you can also add, you know, with your personal collection. So are there any risks involved in collecting photographs? Ngone, maybe if you have something to add as well in terms of the risks, if we look at the physical object. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe let me just start. I think it's, it's um, yeah. I mean, like I said, I worked uh, with the Maibuya archives uh, in the early two th mid 2000s. Yeah. And um, I mean, one of the, 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 the sore point was around the digitizing to avoid losing the, the actual physical image because uh, obviously if the image is not stored in, under a correct condition, they, they're gonna impact it uh, kind of uh, negatively over time. So expenses around you know, resources towards preservation conservations are very, very, very expensive. You, know, you have to ensure that you have continued sustainable uh, capital to, to ensure that those those images are kept in, 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 the, in the correct conditions. And secondly, if you, if you acquire digital images, um, there's again risks of loss, right? Um, if, 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 if your machine crashes, it's gone, meaning that you have to have a number of, of, of uh, platforms to store, to back up your image. But that in itself kind of impacts on the value that one might have on the image, whereby you have a number of copies out there. So there are these dynamics that one needs to think of. But ultimately, I think um, images needs to be put out and be seen. Um, yes. uh, storing them, it might not add value you know, to, yeah. to what yeah. the image needs to be communicating. So as the, the more we have in circulation, the better. So our galleries, we have multiple galleries. We are, are happy to host um, um, that Tim uh, uh, um, collection one of these days. Maybe we need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mufundi, how do you care for your photographs in your personal collection? Well, well it's, a it's a challenge, you know, because uh, uh, in my house, there's a lot, sometimes there's a lot of light which comes in, into my house. And the sun can, you know, can, can be very destructive towards uh, photographs, you know. And uh, so that's, a, that's, that's one of my biggest challenges, you know, because... Um, uh, so much sun comes into my house, and uh, uh, we, which of course affects paintings as well. But uh, yes. uh, uh, but um, yeah, that's 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 my main challenge. And I guess other challenges is how the photograph is framed, you know, because there's issues of acidity and all that sort of thing. And I I also live in Cape Town, so uh, uh, the the seas the the salt from the ocean can 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 creep into a photograph and destroy a photograph. So mm -hmm. also those kind of things, you know, one has to 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 look at. So it's basically just to take good care if you if yes, you yes, yeah, it's a, it's a, it, yeah, you have yeah, you have to watch it, you know, and yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Ngone, and when you were working on larger exhibitions like the. Bamako Biennale, what, um, what were some of the challenges that you experienced? Well, the challenges, uh, whether it's uh, doing uh, an exhibition on the history of Congolese photographers from the early 20th century or working on the uh, 
Africa by Africa exhibition that actually came to Cape Town in uh, 1998 with 400 photographs and some of wow. them dating back uh, to the late 19th century up to the mid uh, 1990s. Um, the challenge is what we already said, it's the conservation. Uh, and sometimes um, uh, it was heartbreaking to see that negatives were stored in very bad condition, had mold. Uh, and that because families of the photographer, whether it's uh, old studio photographers from the late 19th century or let's say early 20th century, uh, when the photographer dies, the family is not aware of the historical value uh, and that what they have, it's a national treasure. Uh, so negatives were not well stored. Sometimes it was just under the bed. Uh, so full of humidity and, uh, and mold. Sometimes they just throw away all the negatives to make uh, room. Uh, and then you're looking for vintage prints that were sometimes half eaten by mouses. Uh, so you have all those different uh, conditions. And that's why I'm just saying to these new type of collectors that they have to think as museum conservation as well. Like yes. uh, you are collecting but then when I said it's a responsibility for the next generations and to sometimes share it with the audience. So how, how do you store them if you're not showing all of them? How do you look after them? Uh, because it's our heritage. Yes. That's the main it's challenge. It's our heritage, yes. It, it, maybe Marilis, just, just to jump in, in there. I mean, um, in my time on, on, at Market Photo Workshop, uh, we were really going out to look for fund to support, especially at, um, photographers that live in the township that have been making images since the 1960s and 70s. Because uh, as Ngona said, most of them, the, the conditions under which these, these valuable uh, um, uh, negatives are stored are really, really sad. And this drastic need for us as a country, uh, possibly if the Minister of Arts and Culture is listening, and, and I hope he's here, um, <laughs> really, uh, they could begin to look at this as one of the way of, of, of you know, excavating and, and profiling the heritage of the country. So there is, I think, a, a major need for us to really intervene, but also come up with the much more accessible ways of, of conservation, because we don't have all to have like these refrigerated spaces that are highly kind of uh, uh, in the infrastructure is inaccessible. I think there are other ways of looking at, 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 at more better ways of prolonging the lives of your work and just safekeeping more than anything and care and care is critical. Yeah. 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 No, it's valuable. And I like the idea of that it's our heritage and it is visual heritage. And I think photographs are also, you know, important documents of time, a specific point in time. So yes, they should be looked after. Before we open up for questions, I was wondering, are there any closing remarks from our panelists? Ngone, um, anything else you would like to, to add about collecting photography and um, the passion and interest and importance of African photography? No, I think I would just end up by repeating what I said. It's a responsibility. And I'm happy that some people are willing to take it because as I said, it's our heritage. It's about who we are and it's about the soul of our communities. Beautiful, yes. Lechota, any final remarks? What I think for me- Out for into me, the world? <laughs> I think for me, um, I, I used to regard myself as kind of an image activist. The, the role of images in society is really, really critical. Just imagine, your, your life without an image. Mm. Then you realize the value of an image and how we need to put value in collecting in whichever format that is. From, we used to do it as family albums then, but now albums have moved digital, but collection, preservation, but also understanding what the, the meaning is, is really critical. So visual literacy across the board is important and it adds value to the industry in terms of supporting the industries of photographers and, and they can make income ultimately. Okay. And Mfundi, mm -hmm. as a private collector, any final no, remarks? I, I, I think the world is just playing a catch, it's catch, a catch up, it's not a catch up game. You know, because African uh, photographers are raising their voices. You know, they say we are here and, uh, and this is our story. And uh, they are, especially after the dawn of democracy in our country, you know, there are, lot, there, there are all these voices, 
you know, cascading into the world. And uh, it's, it's, it's an exciting time to be a photographer, uh, you know, and uh, there's, the, the world is, is, is open to them. And that's what makes me so uh, 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 optimistic about, about photography or the, or the fine art world period, you know? And uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I, I think our photographers and our artists are in a good space. Okay, wonderful. Um, I see we have received two questions. Um, the one is, if anyone wants to send us questions, the one is from Percy. How is the market affecting taste versus cult curatorial attitudes? Um, maybe, um, and Gone, if you want to answer that, or Lehutu, um, because you guys work in the curatorial field quite a lot. And Gone, I know you've said that you, we shouldn't be slaves to, to, to fashion or, um, yeah, um, but yeah, if you just want to answer. <laughs> Maybe. Yes, well, um, I, 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 I don't know about all the creators about the, around the world and what's the motivation when they uh, decide to work with this uh, artist versus that artist and what kind of medium. Uh, I would just say that I, I never feel the pressure of the market. Uh, I keep an eye on the market. Uh, just to know what's going on, but the market does not and will never dictate uh, the type of work and art or artists, photographers I'm interested in, because in the same way I said uh, there's love at first sight between a collector and an artwork, in this case, a photography. Uh, in my case, as a creator, it's also that. It's this kind of, um, kind of connection you have, whether it's artistic, intellectual, uh, philosophical, uh, with the narrative, with the work, the visual impact of it, and then having a lot of conversation with the human being who is creating these works, whether it's an artist or a photographer, and what are the, the issues I want to raise in a project. So that's my motivation. So it's also something very personal as a, as a creator. Uh, and I have absolutely no issue having in the same exhibition project, artists totally unknown, being is sometimes being even self-taught and mega superstars are praised by let's say uh, museums institutions and the and the market for me it's about what do you have to say as a human being and myself as a creator uh, being being moved by 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 your practice and willing to share that with the broader audience so i would just say uh, creators uh, cultural producers it's also our responsibility to uh, resist to the craziness of the market, be aware of the prices, be aware of how uh, how the market is evolving, but staying away from that pressure is crucial. Yeah, market and curatorial, and, and I think I think for me, curatorial is becoming a very dynamic space. Uh, we're seeing younger and younger uh, uh, individual, especially women from the continent, uh, uh, taking up very very um, uh, high end roles in curating works of art and, and photography in that we begin to see a different approach to thinking about uh, 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 what is the best image. You know, there's this dynamic diversification, there is disruption, and such it's become, it become really difficult to say, you know, this is a particular movement across the board. So it's quite dynamic and diverse. The market also, I think, are beginning to vary. Uh, there's much more younger uh, galleries that are coming into the space, uh, beginning to, you know, your Kalak, Kalan, Kalak, Kalak, Nikov in Johannesburg. Um, they, they, I mean, the, the good men also still kind of very traditional in a way of approaching, I guess, but it's beginning to open up to different types of photography. So I think they, the market is also kind of in a dynamic space. And the fact that we have individuals between the ages of 35 to 49, they are called old youths who are beginning to collect you know, the growth of the middle class within the continent across. People are beginning to, to collect subjectively as we speak, but also some are beginning to follow. I mean, Zanella Moholo probably is very expensive for individuals in the country, but we st we're starting to see other people that are in the same kind of theme um, of, of identity and sexuality, uh, but documenting differently, you know, inspired by Zanella. So you starting to see this vibrancy, which is very difficult to, 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 to uh, kind of assess. The markets may be on already, uh, 
established artists that have been there for the past 40 years or 50 years, you see how the images circulate and who collects them. But I think right now it's becoming lovely, I think. And then, yeah. and, and then there's the way uh, value is, is determined in photography, you know? Like for instance, the vintage photograph being top of the list, uh, the edition photograph, where it, does it lie between one and 10 editions, one and five, uh, the, the signed photograph and the unsigned photograph and, and that sort of thing. Those, those are just market, market hierarchies, you know? And, uh, and uh, I, I, I try not to get too caught up in that. And, uh, and, and if, whether a photograph is signed or unsigned, additional unseen, and an addition, vintage or not vintage, if I like it, I like it, I buy it. That's great. <laughs> we, um, there's a second question. Uh, with the impact of social media and misinformation, how does the panel believe photography can pos positively enable or impact society at large and anyone's view of Africa? What should we be capturing to enable this period in time? Lahutu, do maybe have you any ideas? Or well, I mean, ideas? like I said earlier on, the access to, to, to the virtual space is, is very highly democratic, meaning that whoever feels that they can make an image, uh, they can do that and, and, and present it to uh, millions of viewers. So it also becomes kind of a subjective thing. But also I think it's, there's an opportunity for us um, as curators uh, begin to consider the virtual space as a space where we can begin to curate differently, you know, where it's much more collaborative than hierarchical, right? Uh, but also photographers themselves need to understand that the, the, the impact of the virtual platform where attention span is quite, it's very small as, as compared to you walking into a gallery or a museum where you begin to have much more kind of in-depth engagement with the works. Now you're flooded with millions and billions of images. How do you manage that? How, what type of information do you read? Misinformation is critical. Uh, to, uh, it's something that's important that we need to be aware of. But I think for me, the exciting thing is that how do we navigate that? How do we as people that are, are, are trained in photography begin to engage misinformation uh, online because ultimately there has to be a certain level of responsibility uh, in, in, in what type of inf images um, are, are placed and for what intention. So it becomes a space of conversation and dialogue as much as we can go into a, a room where different ideas from radical to more kind of conservative uh, people engaging. I think we need to see the virtual platform as the same platform where some images that are about misinformation are engaged with images that are about informing. Okay, thanks. Anyone else wants to weigh in? We've gone a bit over time. So I think um, uh, we'll, uh, there are three more questions, but we will respond to um, them separately. Um, Thank you so much, everyone, uh, to all the panelists. Um, thank you for your input and your time. And um, yes, I, I enjoyed it greatly. Um, Gone, thank you so much. Uh, all the best for all your work you're doing now. And uh, Lehotu, um, looking forward to seeing what you will be doing at Javid. And Mfundi, thank you so much for your time and your input and sharing your passion of collecting with us. And to everyone who joined us this evening, thank you so much. And we hope to connect soon. Thank you. Thanks, thank everyone. You. Thank you very much. Good night. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.